I have one thing, and I've got to check my phone because I set an alarm so that I would not forget to talk to you about it. Oh, and a reminder? Yes. No. Well, I set an alarm. An alarm? An alarm. So just an alarm goes off, and you're like, oh, yeah, that alarm means anything? That says Calm App Story. Yeah. Oh, because you named the alarm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I've ever done that. You never name your alarms? No, because I just expect, like, I typically use the alarm to wake up or if I know something's coming up at a certain time. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Hmm. I think it's faster for me to set an alarm than set a reminder. I typically use Siri to set the reminder. Because I can just, oh, I need to turn my sound off. But I just go into my clock and set a an alarm like uh, what I'm going to tell you. And then usually it's doctor's appointments. Because I can also hit snooze on the alarm. Ye- okay. Yeah. Yeah. How, how's that helpful? If it's something- well, if I set it like a couple, if I give myself like an hour before I need it, I can hit snooze and be like, oh, yeah, I got to do this. Oh. So if I can't do it right away, you can do the same thing with reminders. You can say, remind me again in that in an hour or eight minutes, like snooze. I need, I need the eight minutes. Is that how long snooze is? Is eight minutes? Eight or nine. Yeah. Huh. I never guessed it was eight. For some reason, I thought it was 10. Probably because it's I just don't a think round it's number. a solid 10. Yeah, nine sounds it, right, but maybe it is yeah. eight. I mean, this is all important stuff to know. Now, the alarm is more jarring. You know, it's like, alert, 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 whereas reminder is like, hello, here's the thing. You, okay. I mean, you set your ding, 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 ding. It doesn't have to be like, oh, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> you don't go into the, uh, the Looney Tunes <laughs> section of the, uh, exactly. the sounds. Yeah. You yeah. are welcome. Okay, so you set an alarm to talk to me about the Calm app. Yes. Which is like a meditation app or just a relaxation app? So I guess those are um, two different things. Well, I think it, it has lots of things, but I have the free version. So I do a lot of like the soundscapes um, where I just, instead of listening to someone talking or, you know, take deep breaths, the meditation side, I just listen to uh, essentially, it's probably like white noise where it's like rain. Yeah. Enchanted Meadow. Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, I, I've kind of been bouncing back between that and uh, this podcast that I just can't finish because this guy's voice is so soothing. He starts talking and I'm like, out. But I really want to find out what happens. So I'm like, okay, let's do Calm tonight. So I turned on Calm and, I, you know, Monty, is that okay? And he's like, yeah, it's great. Just turn something on. So is that too loud? No, it's fine. Okay. So I just drift off into sleep. It's great. And like... I, I, it can't be that long. I'll, I'll say five minutes is pretty generous. But like I am fire alarm. Why is there water rushing into the house? Like where's that water coming from? It was the calm app. It was the rain. The calm app made you panic. Yes. And so I had to change it because I was like, oh, that's not good. Yeah, that's kind of the opposite effect. Yeah. I know. I was like, there's wa- it's a new house. Where's the water coming from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, and Monty was like, your app is on. I was like, oh, okay, thanks. So I know you had said that the water wasn't working on your refrigerator. Speaking, yeah. Speaking of water gushing, you get a replacement refrigerator yet? No, and it's pushed back further, and no. I'm not happy. No ice. <laughs> no ice. So we're buying ice, and that's fun. Man. And I talked to one of the customer service reps yesterday because they called to say, hey, we can't get your fridge for another three weeks. Anything else I can help you with? I'm like, this is not nice. This is not fun. And she's like, well, I can have a salesperson call you. I'm like, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. And she's like, just to be clear, you're just not getting water, right? The huh. fridge works. I'm like, yeah, the fridge keeps things cool. But the fancy, fancy dual ice makers don't work. Then don't even provide single ice. Yeah. Like, so we're buying bags of ice every day. And she was like, okay, well, I'll have somebody call you. I'm like, I know, first world problems. I get it, but still. So they can sell you a second refrigerator or sell you an alternative refrigerator? Yeah, she made it sound like we could do a different fridge. And I'm like, just give me a thousand bucks. Okay, thanks. This dual ice maker's news to me. What's so dual about it? Well, there's one in the top and one in the bottom. Oh, well, mm-hmm. check that out. One in the door and one in the bottom. One that dispenses and one that you can scoop out. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Fancy. But they're, I mean, fancy if they work. 
<laughs> yeah. Got to get water to them. There's that. You go through a bag of ice a day. Pretty close. Damn. Between the girls' water bottles in the morning for school, uh, Monty's thing in the morning, his, his jug, and uh, sports in the afternoon or, yeah. So where are you getting ice? Gas station? Gas station, yeah. Man. Have you inquired with Sonic? Because I know you're a big Sonic ice fan. If there was a Sonic closer to us, I definitely would be getting Sonic ice. Definitely. Do they sell it by the bag there? Uh, they used to. Oh, but you can't. You're just. You're not sure if they currently do. Is that what you're saying? Right, and okay. I. I don't know if it's Sonic by Sonic, but I know it was a big thing for a while that Sonics sold ice by the bag. So. Yeah, same thing with McDonald's. I'm not sure if they still do that or not. I imagine they would love to sell you thing ice though. I don't think I knew McDonald's. They sold ice. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I forget if we started selling ice when I still worked there or not. That came after that. I feel like I saw that in the drive-through once upon a time. Yeah. Yeah. So, ice. The apartment still gets ice. So. Yeah, I don't really go through ice hardly at all, except Ugh. on the weekend when I'm making bloody hammerias. We're ice people. Or whiskey on the rocks. And I thought about investing in one of those uh, silicone ice cube makers. You know, so I could have see-through ice. Right. And then I thought that was kind of overkill. So. When you say investing, yes, like I saw one over the weekend. It was four for nine ninety nine. <laughs> Yeah. So, well, investing not just the money, but the space, the commitment of actually filling it, washing it, you know. You would wash it? Probably. Don't you think after a while it would get various, uh, I don't know, freezer debris in there? I, I don't know. Because it's, it's got a lid, though, right? Are you thinking of the round ones? Yeah. The molds? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would know. think the lid keeps, if, if they were ice trays, I get it. But since it's got like a lid on it, I would think that you're you're covered. I feel like you would, you'd want to wash those every once in a while, right? Am I just a disgusting human being that I'm like, why would you wash your ice silicone mold? Well, there's a variety of reasons why you're a disgusting human being, Kate. But variety, uh, yeah. but add this I to don't the list. get it. <laughs> add this to put it put it on my tab. I, you're probably fine. I don't know. I haven't had ice trays in a very long time. I feel like I remember seeing them get kind of grody after a while. Yeah, but they don't have a lid on them. Yeah, that's a good point. That's what I'm saying with the mold. It's got a like a like a covering. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, I, wouldn't I need to washing it? Should be the, one of your least worries. Is guess where I'm going with that? I feel like I would need to at least rinse it. You know, because if you want to maintain the perfect spheres, you don't want little ice remnants in there each time that could build up. Right? Maybe. Maybe not. I'm going to let you have this one because I don't get it. So Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Don't you get the sphere out when it comes out of the mold? I mean, there's no remnants because it's a sphere. It's a silicone. Well, there could be like little particles in there and they add up over time. I don't know. They, they don't melt into the next one? No. Okay. Not necessarily. I don't know. I don't know. Eh. I'm not an ice scientist. Yeah. I just play one on the radio and now I've been exposed. And if it was like brownie batter, I'd get it. But it's like it's ice. It's gonna melt. Oh, I was talking. I would be water. alternating between brownie batter ice cubes and uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, water ice cubes. I'm sorry, I didn't mention that part. Whiskey. Yeah, whoops. whiskey ice balls. <laughs> whoops. Yeah, we made a brownie batter. Yeah. There you go. Ooh, whiskey with your brownie. You have some brownie batter once your uh, once your whiskey melts. <laughs> <laughs> might taste okay i don't know drizzle a little whiskey over your brownie <laughs> yeah oh great. man yum uh, brownie whiskey float oh yeah okay so still waiting on that appliance uh what yeah. about the garage door have you guys given in and ordered a couple more garage door openers a couple more remote controls nope we're gonna move the router okay did you mention yep. the money that i think you guys should get a, a couple more dedicated rf remote controls i did and? He laughed. That idiot. Well, no, he didn't say that idiot. He, I did. No. He, just, yeah. Monty's a whole lot nicer than I am, Matt. <laughs> but he just laughed. He was just like, oh, okay. God. Yeah. I, I told you before I worry about upsetting Monty or Monty thinking I'm a fool. No. He's married to me, so. <laughs> God, that guy. You need, to, you need to quit that job. That guy gives you horrible advice. Stuff like that, you know. <laughs> No. 
No. I want to impress Monty, Kate. Do you? Yeah, and I want Monty to be able to have easy access to the garage. Oh, when the Wi-Fi goes upstairs, nice and easy. And the Wi-Fi goes kaput. Whoops, I tripped over the cord on the internet, and now Monty can't get the garage door open. Well, that's why we have keys, right? To get and in the front door? he's got intestinal issues that day. <laughs> can't get in in time. And, uh, like you so callously said yesterday on the show, I guess you can just go in the yard. Well, I mean, if you can't get in, isn't the yard better than, you know? Uh, we did have to talk about indecent exposure yesterday. <laughs> okay, hold on. First off, <laughs> if... <laughs> so much happening. Hold on. Stop. Monty is popping a squat in the yard. How is that going to ingratiate yourself with Gene and Kim, Chad and Anna, and Kevin and Valerie, your neighbors? Well, I'm guessing they won't be able to see him because he'll go in between the houses instead of like on the front yard like the dog does. <laughs> okay. Because we're the only one with a dog. And when it's raining, yeah, go ahead and do your duty in the front yard. It's fine. Okay. So... That point done. Now, who did you have to have a conversation with about indecent? Was it Monty? Indecent exposure. <laughs> I know, right? Or Monty had to talk to you. We had to talk to Monty about indecent exposure. No, I had to talk to the girls about indecent exposure. And I wasn't going <laughs> to use those words. Monty said indecent exposure. And I was just going to say, can't pee off the deck. But <gasps> Monty just went with, that's indecent exposure. And they're like, what? And then we had to talk about bits and pieces need to stay in our pants in public. Okay, so I don't expect you to name the child, but was one of the children or both? <laughs> no, Monty was outside on the deck, uh huh, and the screen door was open, and I cannot remember. Both kids were there, but I can't remember which of my girls said, "Are you going to pee off the deck?" And I don't know why, uh-huh. uh, because our neighbor next to us, we're on a corner lot, okay? So our neighbor next to us, their building, so they're not even there. And then there's no houses behind us except for they're building a house. So nobody's there. So I think it was Elliot. Now that I think about it, she's like, you're going to pee off the deck. And so Monty, like we had a good chuckle, but then Monty goes into like a serious, like that's indecent exposure <laughs> lesson. And they're like, what's indecent exposure? You couldn't just say we can't pee off the deck. Like we just, I felt like we went too far with indecent exposure. Yeah. So then we had to talk about keeping bits and pieces. In our places. Well, and then we were asking more specific things about bits and pieces. And I was like, we got to keep the cows in the barn. And they're like, okay. (laughs) What? Yeah. That's what you say when somebody's fly is open. Oh. So the girls are like, your cows are going to get your barn doors open. Oh. No. Uh, Okay. Okay. Uh. (laughs) I'm winning at parenting. If you can't already tell. I'm winning. No, for sure. For sure. So you didn't catch the girls uh, peeing off the deck? I did not catch them. No, we were in the kitchen having dinner (laughs) when this conversation (laughs) happened. (laughs) Oh, that's good. (laughs) You're going to pee off the deck as they're slurping their soup. It was great. Yeah, you got to wait until after midnight to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After midnight and a bunch of, uh, what are you guys drinking over there? Uh, He's on a Coors Light kick right now. Oh, what's his typical kick? Oh, well, he floats around, but he hasn't been on Coors Light in a long time. Like, usually he gets kind of some foo-foo beer. Oh. And by foo-foo beer, I mean, like, you know, the kind that only comes in six packs. and Oh, craft beer is what you're saying. Yeah, but I kind of want to, like, call it hipster beer, but I don't, yeah. It's craft beer. That's probably fine to call it that, but okay. foo-foo, frou-frou, which one did you say? I no, forget. I said foo-foo, foo-foo. not frou. Yeah, foo-foo. We had a conversation about that before, too, I think, right? Foo-foo versus yeah. foo-foo. Because uh, I, I was thinking some kind of fruity beer when you said that. No, foo-foo. Like some kind of blueberry lager or something. No, and, and I think the one that he likes, the foo-foo beer that he likes the most, it does not sound like a foo-foo beer. I mean, it, it sounds like a foo-foo beer. I'm sorry. That'd be like Michelob Ultra or something. Right? No, it's fairy nectar. <laughs> But it's such a heavy, like you would think it's like all fruity oh, and airy, and it man. is like some heavy beer. I'm like, that's not, that's like dragon breath or something. I don't know. It's not fairy nectar. Sounds like something you would buy at the dispensary or something. Right. <laughs> I'll take an ounce of fairy nectar. Yeah. But he's been, uh, he's been doing a lot of Coors Light lately, so. Huh, good for him. Coors Light. 
changing it up. I tried the Travis Scott tequila seltzers, though. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, go on. Those are those are pretty tasty. Tastes like real Travis Scott? Well, just his sweat after being on stage. Okay. Mmm. Yum. With mm. a hint of lime and tequila. Nom nom, am I right? No, I, I think he's, I mean, I don't know why it's called Travis Scott. I don't think that's the name of him. But it's like his line? I don't know. It's his brand. Like Clooney has his, his own tequila. The Rock has his own line of alcoholic yeah. beverages. Bruno Mars does too. Yeah. I got to have uh, some alcoholic merch, turns out. Apparently, apparently. But it was pretty good. Like, I'm not a huge, like, let's drink tequila, because I know that I make real bad decisions, so... Add it to the list with uh, whiskey, right? Since you say whiskey, kind of... Whiskey and Fireball. Oof. Fireball is interesting, because Fireball's not that strong, is it? Matt, I'm so glad Fireball was not around when we were in college. It sure was. I'm fairly certain it was. Mm, Hot Damn was. Oh, that's a cinnamon whiskey, but that was like, let's drink oh, that must be. fire Jolly Ranchers. There is some, I don't even like cinnamon flavoring, but there's something about Fireball that I was like, this is the worst decision I'm ever going to make. Let's have five. Like, oh. Yeah, Fireball. Mm. 33% ABV. Not too bad for hard alcohol. No, but there, I've got a, I had like a horrible horrible sore throat and cough for like a week and then we had our christmas party for work and i decided at the christmas party to use fireball as like a cough suppressant that was a bad 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 next day at work because i think i had fireball coming out of my pores it was just bad yeah fireball was originally part of a line of flavored schnapps developed by seagram in the mid 1980s hmm Okay, let's just say I'm so glad it wasn't popular Okay, in the light, late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, it shows here on the Wikipedia, in 2007, the product was rebranded as Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey. Previously, it was marketed as Dr. McGillicuddy's Fireball Whiskey. Didn't yeah. you use that? Wasn't that your alias when you went out to the bars? Dr. McGillicuddy? Wasn't that what it was? Kitty McDougal. Oh, I was close. Mm-hmm. Blanche Devereaux, Kitty McDougal, and Anastasia Beaverhausen. We were the trio. Speaking of on the rocks, what are you drinking over there? Water. I am so thirsty this morning. I'm sorry. No, it, nah, it, it's, it's all good. I think people like the slush artisanal sound effects. I couldn't find my cup this morning, so I've got my Tanner's cup. So it's got, it doesn't have a lid and a straw like I normally have. You can hear my rocks. I forget who... But some tech bro, you know, some S- Silicon Valley. Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> no, so, some guy whose main job is being a Silicon Valley, like CEO or okay. something says what he does to hydrate is he drinks water until he thinks until he feels like he's about to throw up. But he drinks water out of his hands. What? Uh, I'm telling you what, what these tech bros. Oh, tech bro. I Hopefully know. I'm using that phrase right. I think it's bruh. Tech bruh. Tech bro. What is a tech bro? Quora. Remember Quora? No. It's the website where experts provide answers to things. Quora, Q U O R A. Mm. We talked about it. What is a tech bro? Tech bro was one of these smear nicknames given by the media against Mr. James Damore, who wrote an internal memo describing the sex differences between women and men in tech. Oh, yeah, that's right. He worked for Google or something. Um. Okay, let's search uh, drink water out of hands. Uh, let's see if that's enough. Hmm, it's not going to be enough, is it? Okay. Forget it. Are you going to start doing that? No, that's the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> but he's a tech bro. I can pound a lot of water straight out of a proper receptacle. I'm fairly certain a lot quicker than I can out of my hands. It's so bizarre. I think so, too. But I mean, not shocking at all in the uh, world of like Silicon Valley. Interesting people out there. Interesting habits. Bunch of weirdos. Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, I don't know. That seems a little intense, a little harsh, but uh, okay, okay, more or less, yes. Okay. Monty's taking some uh, more time off to help with stuff. No, <laughs> he's not. He's just in, in no. town right now, or what? Well, he's home every night. 
So that's nice this week. Uh, I think he's he's got some training stuff this week, so he's home every night. Oh, okay. Uh, next week, I think he's out of town, so it's been nice to have him home every night. But um, just I, I as I feel like I've said this at least to Monty five times, and so maybe I've said it to you. For everything I think we are accomplishing, for every one step forward that I'm like, yes, we're making progress. I feel like there's. 10 more boxes or a corner of my bedroom that's just like, hey, got more crap to go through. So I feel very accomplished in certain areas of the house. Like our closet is looking fantastic. But the corner of my bedroom that still has some boxes to go through. (laughs) Yeah, that's got to get done. And I just haven't had the energy to do it. And every night when I go to bed, I'm like, "Ugh, you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you feel like, oh, man, I should have spent an hour today Yeah, digging into that some more. Okay. Especially when I want, I'm okay to leave the chaos outside of the bedroom, if that makes sense. Like, I, this, the goal for the new house is that I want my room to be clean and I want my room to, like, just to be, to relax. Because previously at the apartment, like, our room was such a catch-all. And so I'm like, okay. At the house, we're going to be grown-ups. I'm going to have a clean room, and there's not going to be junk everywhere. <laughs> well, I'd say that's a pretty exceptional grown-up if you pull that off, because I think most grown-ups still have complete messes in there. I know, and I'm hoping... Here's what I'm doing, Matt. I'm eliminating a dresser, so I'm eliminating a flat surface. My desk from um, from my stuff is not in the bedroom anymore, so there's another flat surface. Like the only flat surfaces in the bedroom are going to be like the bedside table, which, you know, obviously has the opportunity to be a catch all for stuff. But I'd like to just have a lamp, my book, a cell phone charger and my bottle of water and call it good. It's a smart strategy of eliminating flat surfaces for sure. I'm hoping so. Yeah, I got to get some out of my house for sure. I'm hoping so. Not to mention the fact they just take up square footage, let alone the fact that they're messy. Yeah. Yeah. I have yet to reach our, like, I cleaned off the island and, because I have this, like, grand idea that there's going to be nothing on our island or our counters. Nothing. Uh-huh. Yeah. With all the cabinets we have, we shouldn't have anything on the counters. So I cleaned off the island and put everything on the kitchen table, and then I was just going to go to the kitchen table and, like, now start putting things away and stuff. The island looks so pretty, and the table looks so trashy that I'm like, yeah, I'll get to you. I'm going to keep looking at the island a little bit longer. <laughs> You're going to keep, keep looking at it? Yeah. I, we'll get there. It's just, you know, it's going to take time. And I, I, I'm only upsetting my own expectations. You know what I mean? So I need to take it down a notch. Yeah. Monty's not like, hey, clean this mess up. Come on. Mm-mm. Could he care? Does he care? He knows what my expectations are, so he's, like, not tr- not trying to follow the rules, but he's like, well, if she's putting stuff down, I'm going to put stuff down, so. What do you mean he's not trying to follow the rules? He's not not trying to follow the rules. Oh, okay. He's, like, not putting junk down just to put junk down. He's not, um. He's trying to support you during these trying times. He is, but at the same time, he's also like, oh, well, she's got a bunch of stuff there on the counter, so I'm going to put some of my stuff on the counter, too, so. Mutually assured destruction yep, on the counter. Exactly. That's, I'm going to have that put on a pillow, Matt. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a, that's a nice, nice uh, sentiment for the house. That's a good one. Mutually assured destruction. That's a good one. That's a Cold War uh, kind of term. It's pretty heavy. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I've heard it, but I've never, like... I totally get it. I relate to it. Oh, yeah. If you launch your missiles, the other country with all their missiles launches their missiles, and then, whoops, mutually assured destruction, Kate. There it is. And allegedly, that's what's kept us from nuking each other all these years. Allegedly. (laughs) (laughs) Need to get that uh, produced, Matt. But yeah, sew that on a pillow. (laughs) There you go. Or a quilt and hanging on the wall. There you go. Next to live, laugh, learn or whatever. Live, laugh, love. Live, laugh, yeah. love, not learn. What's wrong with me? Come on, Matt. God. Ugh. Get it together. Thinking too much about this show, you know, because we're always learning. Always. And laughing and living each day. But rarely loving. But rarely loving. You jack wagon. <laughs> oh. Uh, too far. Uh, yeah, I couldn't think of a good comeback. Sorry. It, too far. Because it, it stung. 
That hurt Kate. <laughs> So, do you have more trips to the where do you go? Dollar Tree, Dollar Store, Dollar Central. I love Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree, Dollar Headquarters, Dollar uh, Boutique, Dollar Dollar Bills, y'all. Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree. So, do you have more trips to the Dollar Tree teed up to further organize the home, or did you uh, plan enough ahead of time? And you got enough receptacles. I have receptacles on standby. I have a stack of receptacles. In the pantry, like just waiting, like, hey, we're here when you need us. And uh, I watched a video last night about uh, how to organize a small closet area. And I was trying to, it was like a clothes closet, but I was trying to think, can I use any of these tips for my hall closet? Because I think my towel situation is a little out of control, but. I'm going to just eliminate the use of towels. Right? Everybody drip dry. Yeah, or get a blower or something. You could probably get a discount get a on one of those ones they have at the car wash since they're there so much, you know? Oh, uh, I know. How much for one of those blowers? Can I get one of those put in my bathroom, please? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Right? Be a nice pampering moment. I mean, if I could have one of those for my hair, that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be an interesting look. I feel like your, your hair might do interesting things under that kind of... Kind of pressure. I want to kind of miles per hour come out of one of those. Well, it's got to be something because I can immediately feel the heat in my car. Yeah. Like I can feel the heat of the, of the blower. My hair can really catch on fire. Okay. So does the family get to watch any of these videos with you? The organizational videos? Or are you just watching them on your phone or something? I'm watching them on my phone. Yeah. Have you thought about starting your own YouTube channel, Kate? No. Come on. Hi, I'm Kate. I uh, lurk on other people's uh, Facebook pages and uh, Instagrams. Yeah, I can't be bothered to like other people's stuff, even though clearly they're thirsty for likes. Right, right. By the way, thanks again for liking my post the other day on Instagram. That felt nice. You're welcome. Yeah, I really don't know what I did to deserve that. I mean, you should post more stuff. Well. Says the girl who hasn't posted anything in years. (laughs) See, I'm a lurker. I, ha- I do have a lot of photos in reserve. I don't know. It feels weird posting something too late after the fact to Instagram because it seems far less Insta. I, I'm with you. And then aren't you, are you supposed to hashtag later Graham, right? Oh, are you? Maybe. I don't See, know. See, I'm not hip. I think later Graham's a thing. Not hip with the kids. Okay, you know, uh, I mentioned forcing the family to watch these YouTube videos. Do you have a way to cast? Are you, do you cast, ever cast your phone to the TV? I don't, but we do. Okay. Monty has done that a couple of times when he's watching stuff on boring stuff. <laughs> yeah, I use the YouTube app on, I know I talk about watching YouTube a lot, but uh, I'm watching all my big TV using the Apple TV app. Yeah. It's a great way to consume YouTube. But many times when you're watching YouTube, you're watching something that's pretty niche and maybe the whole family doesn't want to gather around and watch. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. I do. There was a there was a podcast that I made the girls listen to that was about the home organization. It was a really short one, but uh, I was like, you guys, you have to listen to this. This makes a lot of sense. And this will help you understand what I'm expecting from you. And so uh, they were really mad (laughs) and they did not want to listen to it. No kidding. But then I've noticed that they were like picking up on it and like, okay, see little seeds. Yeah, your girls are 9 and 11, is that right? 9 and 11. Oh, yeah. Got it. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Pardon me. And uh, I try to think of how helpful I was at 9 and 11, and mm-hmm. I don't know that I was as helpful as what I uh, expect from our girls, but I tried to explain them the other day that, like, my mental health is connected to the... <laughs> Neck bone. Uh, the status of our house. Or where we're living. And they're like, what? I'm like, so if it's messy here, it's messy in here. And I pointed to my head. <laughs> Not your stomach. Because you've talked before no. about having nerves and potentially vomiting. And I haven't done that in a long time. So Yeah, I'm very proud of you. I got through buying a house without vomiting. I was pretty, <laughs> pretty excited. <laughs> 